Hello everybody! I have been meaning to talk a little about my academia journey after coming back from Japan. Actually, it started while I was still in Japan, during the past few months of staying in Japan, actually. Uh, it's about applying for PhD in France. So I have been wanting to do a PhD for a very long time, but I am happy that I didn't right when I finished my master's degree because I changed of direction a little bit as in I graduated from literature but then I did another master's in computing as I tend to be interested in both things like literature and language and sciences like mathematics and computer studies. This is going to be my personal story for now, rather than going into great detail about how one applies to PhD in France. If you have questions or you would like me to make another more detailed video, then please tell me in the comments. So my first step was to actually contact the universities that I was interested in and the departments in question. I sent out the first couple of emails a year ago asking if I should contact professors well in advance the way it is done in, let's say, um, the United Kingdom, which I'm way more used to. And they told me that, yes, I should contact uh, some potential supervisors, which I did. I contacted supervisors from two universities that I was initially interested in regarding the application procedure, I was told that it is not hard to get accepted uh, given that uh, you have the right, uh, let's say, diplomas and you find a supervisor that finds your project interested and helps you shape it. However, it is more difficult to get a, a scholarship. And universities mentioned as the most common source of scholarship, the so-called contrat doctoral or the contract of the PhD student, which is a working contract between your university and you as a researcher. However, it is a very competitive contract uh, to receive. So you have to start applying and preparing uh, well in advance. So for these two universities of my choice, I was in contact with my potential supervisors and I prepared my uh, so-called project, uh, like a description of um, my proposed research, as well as a bunch of other documents. And then firstly, my application was accepted based on these documents. And then I was invited to appear for a so-called audition or interview when they would hear me talking about the project and then ask me a few questions. The jury was just members of the whole broad department. While there are many uh, kind of, uh, it's a hierarchy of divisions in a French university. So there is the department, uh, then there is the doctoral school and then there is the lab. I hope I'm not uh, missing anything. So basically the doctoral school is a bit of a large structure and there are likely to be a number of candidates from really different subjects. Not, for instance, not only related to computational linguistics, like in my case, but also uh, related to, let's say, formal linguistics. So I was actually, I was invited for an interview for uh, the first university, which I will mention, I won't mention all universities that I applied to, but it was uh, Université Sorbonne. And I felt like it went really well, the interview went well, however, I received the answer the same night and the answer was no, which made me feel a little bit bad, uh, because I kind of, I didn't realize it would be that hard. I felt like I prepared well, I did well at the interview, so it will be fine. However, it was not. For the second university, I would have to go through the same process a month later. So I thought maybe I was better prepared, I would make an even better project and maybe do better at the interview. However, actually the supervisor there, actually the two supervisors were a little bit stricter and they really, they were older 
and it seemed that they really had their own ideas about what my project should look like. So from the start, they kind of really changed my ideas completely. But I thought that even with that, I had some original ideas about how to make the project work, including even a little snapshot, a little um, like code, a little program that I would make to demonstrate my future research. And I thought that went well. Uh, and later even I submitted part of this research for a conference and the answers from reviewers were that sounds great, that sounds so interesting. However, when I sent it to the supervisors, they said, we looked at it and we reached the agreement that it's really not good, it is really not well supported, it's not a good project, so we are deciding not to even present it, so please don't apply for the uh, PhD contract. Uh, so I gave up on this university, obviously, and I still had uh, Université Sorbonne, with which I had established a pretty good uh, rapport with, uh, with the supervisors. Uh, we were writing to each other regularly, they were giving me ideas about how to find some alternative means of um, uh, scholarship. So I kept in mind that I may go to the Sorbonne if uh, nothing else works that is just that is paid normally the payment would be something like 2000 euros a month if your phd is paid so i now uh, as advised by my potential supervisors from the sorbonne i signed up for several lists through which i received news about events like conferences or uh, journals but also offers for funded uh, PhDs. So I applied to a total of six of these, if I'm not mistaken. Some of them were really interesting and really fit uh, what I want to do. So they were really about computational linguistics, occasionally really involving literature as well, as in looking at a particular genre, um, via statistical methods. I'm not going to get into detail, but really all of these uh, funded PhDs for which I applied like sounded great to me and I sent out my applications which were usually just a um, motivation letter and my CV, possibly some um, recommendations from my professors from Japan, Kyoto University, which they kindly provided. So the only difference here was that it was not it would not be a PhD that I've defined, not a project that I've defined, but a project that has been given readily to me. So I ended up being invited to three interviews out of these six applications that I sent out. The first one went relatively well, but not perfect in my opinion, following which I received an email saying that I am third in line for it. I don't know how many people were invited to the interview. It was just me in front of a jury of four or five people and I was third. So it means that if two people, the first two people give up, uh, they decide to do something else, then it will be me. Uh, which was very nicely presented. It was presented very positively. It's not like we, we regret it, but you didn't make it. It's like you're third and I was happy to receive this news. The next one was more like about formal linguistics, and, but it was in English and I prepared well. Um, I, the topic was a little bit new to me, so I really took the time to prepare and I made a presentation in English. Uh, there were very uh, clear kind of um, requirements for this presentation. So I thought it went really well, but then a week later, uh, they really took their time, I received an email saying that my presentation was great and so on, but unfortunately they could not keep me, uh, meaning it was unsuccessful. And then the third one was a lot after that, maybe a month after. We're talking now about um, mid-August. And for this one, uh, which was located in Belgium, uh, in uh, Université Catholique du Louvain, I came second. So there's been progress. I came second, meaning if the first person gives up, then I can do it. But they also said that the first person is really enthusiastic and confirmed that they would be going for it. 
So again, I had mixed feelings. At the same time, I was happy because, like I said, I had been in contact with these two supervisors from the Sorbonne uh, and they were really, really nice and I was hoping to work with them, even though that would mean that nothing else worked, that I didn't receive any scholarship for now. So I was happy about that, in a way, but then I was like, okay, this didn't work either. However, there was a twist here. The specialists organizing the PhD in Belgium actually contacted me to say that there was a work position at their university that would last one year and that they would be happy to consider me for it. Uh, to which I applied that I was interested, I consulted with uh, the supervisors from the Sorbonne, they said yes, go for it, absolutely, and they said it's not a problem to work full-time while starting you your first year at the Sorbonne. So I accepted and following which um, they thought a little, there were maybe a couple of other candidates and I received it. So this is my situation right now. I am a PhD student in La Sorbonne Université and I'll be working on readability or how hard or difficult and in what exact ways texts are, talking about literary texts and talking about different languages and the differences between them as well as different audiences such as foreign language learners or children or people with a certain learning disability and so on. And at the same time, in parallel, I will be focusing and really this will be my focus this year, I'll be focusing on the project at UC Louvain in Belgium, uh, which will require some traveling and I'm totally up for it. And this project is about making an app so my actual position is like a developer. Uh, I'll be making an app that allows for vocabulary, English vocabulary to be studied in optimal manner by students at uh, this university. Uh, we're talking about specialized vocabulary in English related to different sciences. And there will be a number of exercises that help students uh, see the vocabulary over and over in natural contexts. The context can be sought, sought among a database or even generated automatically through a language model. Okay, so this is what I wanted to share with you guys. I haven't really started work yet. I am a little bit anxious about being too busy, but... I will, of course, try to keep you posted about the process. And yeah, if you have any questions, please ask. If uh, you're interested in this kind of content, please like and subscribe to Monoglossia for language and linguistics related content. Thank you very much. Bye bye.